Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to the entire history of Ottoman Empire explained in seven minutes. I'm Muslim, so I know some little bit about the Ottoman Empire, but I don't know how you're gonna explain such a big empire that existed for so many hundreds of years in six, seven minutes. Let's get into it. Please like the video if you enjoyed, comment on GCNX and subscribe for more content. The year was 1299 AD when a ruler of the Turkish tribes in Anatolia had a dream of a mighty tree growing out of him and covering the whole world. This ruler was Osman I, and with the help of his successors, they built the mightiest Middle Eastern empire of their time. The term Ottoman originates from Uthman, which mm -hmm. is Arabic for Osman, named after the ruler who had the dream of the Ottoman Empire. We are gonna review the historic events that marked the chronology of this mighty empire. Okay. Origins of the Ottoman Empire. The history of the Ottoman Empire begins with Osman I in 1299 AD, a leader of the Turkish tribes in Anatolia who established a formal government and gave foundation to the Ottoman Turks. He and his son Oran started conquering and expanded the territory to the northwest and captured Bursa in 1326. Bursa became the new capital of the Ottoman state and the Byzantine Empire lost control over northwestern Anatolia. The Ottoman Turks continued their expansion objectives by conquering the important city of Thessaloniki from the Venetians in 1387. Later on in 1389, they took over Kosovo, which ended the Siberian power in the region making way for the Ottomans to expand into Europe. In an attempt to stop the advance of the Ottoman Turks, there was the Battle of Nicopolis in 1396. The Ottoman warriors were victorious in what is regarded as the last large-scale crusade of the Middle Ages. It is Sultan Bayezid I who doubled the Ottomans' land between 1389 and 1402 earning his nickname as the Thunderbolt. Unfortunately, he failed to unite the early Ottoman Empire, which was bisected by the once mighty city of Constantinople. Can I just say, like, the imagery, where are all those images coming from? Is this from a TV show, a movie, or did they just make those images for this? I don't think they did it for just this video. Where are these images coming from? And also, I'm taking their, uh, what they're saying as facts, because as far as I know, I mean, I don't know the, the history of the Ottoman Empire. I know about some about uh, what the prophet said about the, 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 the guy who is going to conquer the Ottoman Empire, the righteous guy, Mehmet al Fatih, and things like that. But yeah, this is epic so far. He was later defeated and captured in the Battle of Ankara by Timur. This started the only civil war that the Ottoman Empire had in its 600 years of history. Wow as Bayezid's son fought over succession. It is Mehmed I who finally emerged out of the chaos and restored the Ottomans' power and brought an end to the civil war referred to as the Ottoman Interinum. This Between 1430 is... and 1450, Mehmed's son, Murad II, was the one to recover the lands that were lost in the Battle of Ankara. He defeated the united armies of the King of Hungary in the final battle of the Crusade of Varna, and was also later victorious on an attack over his lands in the Second Battle of Kosovo. Man, I'm just like the history is good, but this image is completely taking me over. Look at the the outfits and all of it. Is this from a movie? Please let me know in the comments, and also if you make some mistakes, please uh, rectify him in the comments down below. Thank you. Kosovo in 1448. The son of Murad II, Mehmed the Conqueror was the one to solve the Constantinople issue by capturing the city with Marshal Finesse on the 29th of May, 1453, when he was only 21 years old. Mehmed the Conqueror then renamed the city, which is now known as Istanbul, the, the new capital of the Ottoman Empire, and the city became a powerful international center of trade and culture. Sultan Mehmed ruled from 1453 to 1481, and when he died, Bayezid II, his oldest son, became the new sultan. Mm -hmm. The Rise of the Ottoman Empire 
The siege in Constantinople marked the status of the Ottoman Empire as the preeminent power in southeastern Europe and eastern Mediterranean. Orthodox patriarchs acknowledged the Ottoman rule over the Venetian rule, and this was only the beginning of the rise of the Ottoman Empire. It was between the 15th okay, and 16th centuries that the Ottoman Empire had its greatest conquests and expansions. By 1517, under the rule of Sultan Selim I, the Ottoman Empire conquered Egypt, Syria, Arabia, and Palestine in a very short period. Mm -hmm. By these conquests, they became a Middle East trade giant as... Isa, when they demanded the Khilafah from the Abbasid, is it after they conquered, I think, yeah, it makes sense, also, only after they conquered Syria, I mean Bilal al-Sham in general, that's that's the only way for them to demand the, 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 the Khilafah from the Abbasids. As no one could go east or west without crossing the Ottoman Empire and the empire flourished via the major overland trade routes between Europe and Asia. The Ottoman Navy played a great part in protecting and contesting the important seagoing trade routes, as they were in competition with the Italian cities in the Black, Aegean, and Mediterranean Seas, and with the Portuguese in the Indian Ocean and the Red Sea. It was during the reign of Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, who ruled from 1520 to 1566, that the Ottoman Empire reached its peak in glory and dominion. He was the successor of Selim I and made a major impact on the history of the empire. Suleiman the Magnificent created an unwavering system of law that made the justice system fair and overall efficient. He also welcomed various forms of arts and literature. On top of that, he went on 13 raiding campaigns in every direction from his empire. He established the Ottomans' rule in present-day Hungary and other oh. Central European territories after winning the Battle of Moax in 1526. He took Baghdad from the Persians and gained control over Mesopotamia, installing naval presence in the Persian Gulf. The Ottoman Empire counted 15 million people by the end of the reign of Suleiman the Magnificent. At the time, the too. fall of the Ottoman Empire. It was from 1600 that the Ottoman Empire started to decline, with its armies scattered across its vast lands due to constant Austrian and Persian military campaigns. These conflicts impacted heavily on the empire's resources and management of its defense on the western and eastern borders. As a result, it was overall impossible to maintain its naval presence for trade competition effectively. In 1912 and 1913, the Ottoman Empire lost almost all its European territories in the Balkan Wars. In 1914, the Ottoman Empire entered World War I on the side of the Central Powers, and they were defeated in October 1918. The title of the Sultan was officially eliminated in 1922, and this marked the official end of the once mighty Ottoman Empire. And the end of the Khilafah too. I, they did mention the Khilafah because this is a Western iteration. But I'm sure like if you're listening to a Muslim cleric or a Muslim uh, historian, he would mention that this, this was also the end of the Khilafah and England and France and whoever they are, they shared the territories of the Middle East, Palestine, Syria, you know. The remaining lands of the empire became the Republic of Turkey under the governments of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk on October 29th. I have never seen him in video. I've heard about him. Imagine your name is Mustafa. Mustafa, the chosen one. And then you did what you did. But as I say, it's not the name that counts. It is was in the Qalb. 1923. In conclusion, the Ottoman Empire left an outstanding legacy after ruling for more than 600 years. They will always be remembered for their fabulous military dominance and innovation, ethnic diversity. Why are they prostrating their heads though? Because as Muslims, this doesn't make any sense. Why would their subjects prostrate their heads to 
the Sultan even, even as a sign of respect. Because not even to the Prophet وسلم, you prostrate your head only to God. So this doesn't make any sense. City, religious tolerance, and they're still standing architectural marvels. Yeah, that was a great video. I enjoyed, I like, I listened to the history, but man, the visuals were more captivating than anything else. I don't know if that was from a movie or a TV show, but please let me know in the comments. That was a great video. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, please like, comment, and subscribe.